my name is Katie Chenoweth and I am teaching a course called Derrida's Library, Deconstruction and the Book. It's one of the very few philosophers libraries um, that has been kept intact. When I decided to come to Princeton I knew that Derrida's library was at Princeton and so that was an archive that drew me here. Princeton University recently acquired his library and I think the opportunity to be hands-on with that material was definitely very enticing as a researcher and to be able to be one of the first people not only to analyze his work um, since his passing in 2004 but also to be one of the first people to really view how he read. Derrida used his books as these kind of um, almost files um, so it's actually full of this other stuff and then there are books that are, you know, just full of annotations and interesting marginalia. We collect real things because we want students to have real experiences of them. That's why we buy annotated books, for example. Uh, when you see a book that Derrida had in his hand and that he marked up and that he put paper clips into and post-its into, you have a feeling that you're looking at a process happening. You're, 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 you're part of a process that's happening. And that, it seems to me, is extraordinarily exciting. There were two main things that I wanted the students to get out of this class. Um, one is that it's an introduction to Derrida and his thought, and I didn't ask the students have any prior experience with Derrida before coming in, so it's really a course in philosophy in that sense, um, and that's sort of half of what the course is. And then the other half is really an exploration of an archive and what it means to use archival materials to really think about archival materials in relation to a philosopher's work. I'm really interested in how he perceives writing as gestural, as an activity, as something that's actively lived. As a dancer, that attention to the now, to the presence, um, is very important, and that's something that I have brought to the table. But at the same time, the class is filled with other students who might speak German instead of French, or who might have a presence in Greek language, and can really offer a different nuance to the readings of the text. The books in it are real physical objects and they have a life of their own and you see Derrida just putting a bunch of different materials in the books so there are amazing postcards and photographs and notes, um, even press leaves sometimes that I wouldn't expect to find in books. So there was a decision to treat this not as a collection of book, 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 um, but as something else, huh? something um, where each object had a relation to other objects, both in terms of their location, um, in terms of their materiality. So if you go into the library and you want to request a book, you never get just one book, you get an entire box. Um, and that box will often have books by the same author, books that were um, close to that one on the shelf, and you'll have this whole kind of treasure trove where you get to discover other things and not just the one thing that you thought you wanted to look at. One day, Professor Chinawith brought in a typewriter to class. It modeled um, one of the models that Derrida had, and that was just a way for us to engage um, with our body to really be hands-on in a very literal and physical way with the text in the same way that Derrida when he was writing, especially now since our generation mainly types on the computer that we've really removed the physicality of writing from the process. Well, you can't do two fingers. Mm -mm. You can't do two things usually right next to each other. For me, probably the one thing I would want students to take away from the course would be a sense that thinking is not hap something that happens abstractly. Um, philosophy is not something that happens purely in the abstract, uh, purely in the mind. Um, that it happens in relations to books that you hold in your hand and pencils and pens and marking and reading as this active material technical process and that you ca absolutely cannot uh, separate those two. And I, I really hope that that in turn encourages students to become more active thinkers themselves and to not think about philosophy as something that happens up in the clouds, um, but as something that they're engaging with and they're doing even as they're holding their books in their hands and making their marks in their books. It's probably the last library of its kind that will come our way because people simply don't collect books like that anymore. With reading these texts, with also the library in mind, it's incredible to see the way the idea of the library is something that is animated throughout Derrida's whole career and his whole thinking and you can read closely the ways in which he's thinking consciously about 
what will happen to my books one day.